driving around. No, actually, I came from the doctor's office. I've seen a lot of posting on YouTube about Jeff Beck's tribute concert. And I share sentiment from other people who posted that they do have a mixed feeling. Because people that was involved in this tribute, I mean, thanks to Eric Clapton, who's responsible for putting all this together. But the roster goes like this. Eric Clapton, uh, Ron Wood, and uh, Rod Stewart. I'm trying to remember from my memory of the, watching the video. And uh, Jeff Beck's band with Rhonda Smith and that uh, chick drummer who actually was really amazing. And there was a set with a set or maybe a couple songs from John McLaughlin and Kirk Hammett was there so was Billy Gibbons and uh, the sly guitar guy uh, he was one of the almonds son um, trucks yeah Daryl's trucks or Butch trucks uh, anyway he I don't know what his association with Jeff Beck was uh, but he was there and along with uh, the pedal steel guy and oh Gary uh, Gary somebody uh, a black guy who plays like a little blues there and um, there now I know in his Jeff Beck early days he was associated with those blues oriented guitarists like um, Eric, Eric Clapton and everything but the Jeff Beck that I know is not that. Jeff Beck that I know. I'm kind of welling up this. Although I've met, never met him before. I saw him in concert many times, probably five times. And listening to him in concert, I always felt that. Um, he was, you know, it's cliche, but he was an innovator that I never seen anybody play guitar like that anymore. And I shared this thing, uh, my first experience with Jeff Beck back in 1976 when I came to the United States and I had nobody else to um, go with. So I went all alone to see Jeff Beck at a place in um, Burbank called Starlet Amphitheater. And, you know, I was expecting, uh, well, I was listening to Beck, Bogart, and Apis, that trio band. And the place there I grew up, Okinawa, had a cover band who did amazing rendering of Beck, Bogart, and Apis. But when I came here, the Blow by Blow came out and wired. And he totally changed. And I was expecting that, and I went on uh, to the, the concert, and I said, my God, what what is he doing? What is he doing? And that's the Jeff Beck that I am. And ever since then, I saw him on, um, uh, what tour was that? Um, there and Back tour, and I believe I went to see the Arms concert, which was a tribute to Ronnie Lane was suffering from uh, leukemia or MS mus muscular something, cirrhosis, something like that. And all three guitarists came, Eric Clapton, Jimmy Page, and Jeff Beck. Jeff Beck was kind of a sandwich in between the orders. Eric Clapton plays first, then Jeff Beck, which blew me away. And by the way, that's the time that um, Jeff Beck was with Simon Phillips. And uh, I believe Simon Phillips, Fernando Sanders, and Jan Hammer, and him was, was the basic layout. And Jimmy Page had the last stage, and uh, Paul Rogers came up to join him on some songs, but Jimmy Page was effing sloppy. You know, he was 
I don't know. It's not the Jimmy Page that I knew, because but I did see Led Zeppelin once before, and uh, with all due respect, uh, people say Led Zeppelin concert was really amazing. But when I saw Led Zeppelin back in 1977, uh, whoa, oh, I guess that was the same period that I saw Jeff Beck. Uh, they were. Uh, they were a little sloppy, you know. They were there, yeah. They did all the songs, and you know, uh, John Bonham for whatever it is was good, but uh, it did not do the justice that I wanted to see as a Led Zeppelin. Back to Jeff Beck. So this tribute had all those uh, blues guitarists, and some of them I do not see any correlationship with Jeff Beck, other than Eric Clapton and. I believe Billy Gibbons was a friend from way back when um, he was with Rod Sewer and all those people because Billy Gibbons uh, goes way far back on Rod Stewart and Ron Wood you know the, the first rendition of Jeff Beck group Ron uh, Wood was the was the bassist and um, Rod Stewart was just vocalist and there was a, another cool period within Jeff Beck but when the Jeff Beck, second Jeff Beck group came around, the Jeff Beck group two, with Bob Tench and amazing Max Middleton piano, um, that was it. And the cover band that I talked about earlier, earlier in Okinawa did those covers. And they were, I, you know, I, I don't wanna use the word jazz in there because Jeff Beck really was not jazz, you know? Uh, he had a lot of jazz players within him and I, I guess a lot of jazz player admire him uh, going into accepted by the jazz uh, world while wow, not being a jazz guitarist that sounds a little funny because he was an innovator you know and there are a lot of things that I listen because I play guitar for a long time and I play it and say how the hell does he do that? And it's like, I don't know. But tribute, I thought will be more tributing what Jeff Beck really was. Maybe, I don't know, it's, it's, it's only me saying that, but maybe separate into certain or uh, stages in his musical career. You know, his blues period with the Arbors and uh, no, he's a um, little bit of a rock period uh, with Beck Boger and Apis and you know yeah I mean why wasn't Carmen Apis with them you know or uh, what we lost Tim Bogart the, um, the basis for BBA uh, a few years ago but yeah why wasn't them there and then his uh blow by blow period which just uh you know changed everything about guitar to be you know being a solo guitarist and without any vocal and he was able to pull that and maybe there should have been more tribute about that now i posted on my facebook uh one of the two amazing performance was uh gary clark jr he did the rendition of Since We Ended the Lovers, which was uh, actually written by Stevie Wonder. Uh, it shows how diverse Stevie uh, or Jeff Beck's, uh, you know, accomplice or friends were, like you know, Stevie Wonder, you know, he's, he's not a rock guy. Anyway, his rendering and the other, other musicians contributing to that per performance in the tribute was, 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 was good. Uh, I think it was rightfully done uh, and it was here and then John McLaughlin now if I remember when Jeff Beck uh, became a solo artist he did tour with Mahavishnu Orchestra I think Jeff Beck opened up for them then they collaborated on a certain project and uh, I heard that Jeff Beck admired John McLaughlin. 
John McLaughlin. And John McLaughlin himself has, a, has an amazing career. Uh, he, he was with the Mahabishan Orchestra, but I believe he was one of the guitarists in Miles Davis' group. So he had that strong jazz background, but he practically was one of the band who invented fusion rock. He, he's just an amazing guitarist. But he got the respect of Jeff Beck. And other hand, John McLaughlin admired Jeff Beck also. And you can see his influence in his playing in his album. So to me, um, I mean, I can only see the highlights from the tribute concert, but it was that moment that, oh, this is part of Jeff Beck's legacy, you know, real rock, a little bit influenced by jazz and innovative, not just this bluesy, you know, one, four, five type thing. Uh, although that's part of Jeff Beck, but that's not the Jeff Beck that I, I remember listening to him for many, many years, for, you know, over for 40 years. I've been listening to him for from 1976. No, 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 no. More than that, maybe early 70s. So it's been almost 50 years I've been listening to Jeff Beck. And I did see him about four times in the concert. And the concert is nothing like the record. You know, I, it, it doesn't, does just, I mean, there are certain bands that I really feel that you have to see them live in concert because the record does not do justice. And I can go on and say that, hey, you don't know what Pink Floyd, unless you experience a Pink Floyd concert. It's, it's something like that, I mean, you know. Well, record some, sometimes does the does justice, but anyway. Uh, that was my little spew here. Um, sorry, I'm just driving and this, stuck in this uh, traffic on Los Angeles 101. So that was my little spew. Thank you for listening.